गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स दिस इज डॉक्टर विनीत सहगल एंड वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल सेशन ऑन अन अकेडमी प्लेटफॉर्म वेयर आई वुड डिस्कस फ्यू इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन इन ऑफ्थलमोलॉजी सो बेसिकली इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन ऑफ्थलमोलॉजी बिकॉज वी हैव सीन दर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दैट आर आस्ट इन द एम्स पी जी आई एंड नीट एग्जाम आर इमेज बेस्ड द सेकेंड इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज दैट बाई डूइंग द इमेज बेस्ड क्वेश्चन यू गेट अ नॉलेज अबाउट द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ऑफ्थलमोलॉजी okay so let's start the session today so subscribe for the an academy need plus program don't forget my code that is dr vineet yt to get 10% off so the first question is visual field defect seen when the lesion is at the area 3 okay so this is our area 3 here okay so what is the they have asked that what is the type of visual field homonymous hemianopia pie in the sky pie in the floor or homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing so what should be the answer so when we see the anatomy of the brain this is the frontal lobe this is the parietal lobe here is the temporal lobe and the area 4 is the occipital lobe okay so they are basically asking when the lesion is at the level 3 okay or the area 3 which is temporal lobe what would be the type of lesion so the type of lesion would be b that is pi in the sky okay so like this this is our pi this is superior quadrantinopia why because these at level t okay what are the fibers that are gone these are the inferior fibers okay so we get a superior quadrantinopia whenever we have a lesion at the temporal lobe if they ask about the parietal lobe then in parietal lobe there would be pi on the floor okay so this is pi on the floor okay so pi on the floor that is option c would be in the parietal lobe and whenever there is a lesion at the occipital lobe okay so this is my occipital lobe and here when there is a lesion of posterior ciliary artery so this causes homin homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing okay so this is how the homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing looks like is it clear everyone and if they just ask homonymous hemianopia so the answer would be optic tract okay so this is how you can tell so how the homonymous hemianopia looks like so let's say this is like a homonymous hemianopia so the visual fields of only one side that is let's say here the right side of the right eye and the right side of the left eye they are involved here okay so this is right side of the right eye and the right side of the left eye so this is called homonymous hemianopia let's move to the next question a patient presented with neovascular glaucoma and this procedure was done in the patient as shown below what is the procedure being done so your options are ahmed glaucoma valve trabeculectomy iridotomy or goniotomy so if you can see here in this picture if you can see there is a tube in the anterior chamber and this tube is a translucent tube okay so this is basically a ahmed glaucoma valve so what ahmed glaucoma valve does is that it basically makes an alternative channel of flow of the aqueous humor to the subconjunctival space it is done in those cases where you cannot do trabeculectomy okay or the chances of trabeculectomy to get failed are very high or there is a previously failed trabeculectomy so the indications of doing ahmed glaucoma valve that can be asked is neovascular glaucoma 
failed trabeculectomies or patient with AFK glaucomas. Okay, so those who are having glaucoma and they are AFK. So these are the three main conditions where you can have a amid glaucoma valve as your treatment modality. Okay, so we are putting a tube inside the aqueous humor. Remember where we do iridotomy. Iridotomy is done in angle closure glaucoma and where we do goniotomy that is the peeling of the trabecular meshwork we do it in the cases of congenital glaucoma okay congenital glaucoma the second question they can ask is the most common cause of neovascular glaucoma so remember the most common cause of neovascular glaucoma in india is proliferative diabetic retinopathy if that is not given in the answer then your answer is central retinal venous occlusion okay let's move to the next question not true regarding patient presented with the clinical picture like this your options are diagnosis cystoid macular edema cause can be vascular occlusion pg analogs are the drug of choice in patient presenting with glaucoma and this condition and intravitreal steroids are used in the treatment so what is the answer so the answer here is C. Remember, what is this condition? So this condition is cystoid macular edema. Okay, so this is a cystoid macular edema. Why it is cystoid macular edema? Because cyst like spaces, can you see here the cyst like spaces are there in the inner layers of retina okay so the diagnosis is cystoid macular edema and what is this investigation this investigation is optical coherence tomography okay then what are the causes of cystoid macular edema so the causes of cystoid macular edema are vascular occlusion like crvo okay it can also be seen in central retinal artery occlusion but more commonly seen in CRVO. Then the second most common cause is the after any intraocular surgery, let's say post cataract surgery. And we have seen in India it is the most common cause of cystoid macular edema. Then in cases like diabetic retinopathy, okay, even in the conditions of choroidal neovascular membrane. Okay, in these cases also you can have a cystoid macular edema. Very important is the drugs that can cause cystoid macular edema. So remember it with a mnemonic that is NEAT PG. So N goes with nicotinic acid. E, e goes with epinephrine. T goes with tamoxifen and PG goes with PG analogs. Okay, so these are the causes of a cystoid macular edema. So PG analogs cannot be given in the patient of glaucoma with a cystoid macular edema. They are the contraindicated drugs. Okay. Option D, intravitreal steroids can be used here. Definitely, the treatment of cystoid macular edema is first we give topical NSAID drops. If it does not resolve, we can give topical steroids. And even if that is not resolved, we can go with the intravitreal steroids or anti VEGF injections. So, a name that you have to remember for AIMS that is Ozurodex. So, it is a dexamethasone implant 0.07. So, that is basically put inside the intravitreal cavity as a treatment for cystoid macular edema or posterior uveitis. So this is a picture of a central serous retinopathy. So why I have given a picture here there is that you have to differentiate that there is a difference between central serous retinopathy and cystoid macular edema. If you can see here this area. So this area you have the fluid collection. Okay, you have a fluid collection here, but 
इट इज बिटवीन द रेटेनल पिगमेंट एपिथीलियम एंड द लेयर्स दैट आर अब द रेटेनल पिगमेंट एपिथीलियम ओके सो देर आर नो सिस्टिक स्पेसिस एल्सवेयर ओनली अब द रेटेनल पिगमेंट एपिथीलियम वी हैव अ कलेक्शन ऑफ फ्लूड हेयर दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड सेंट्रल सीरस रेटेनोपैथी और इट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड सीरस फोवियल डिटैचमेंट लाइक अ रेटेनल डिटैचमेंट so the next spotter here is this is also a oct picture and here if you can appreciate there are the layers missing at the center okay so this is a macular hole okay so this is a macular hole which is at the center of macula and this is another oct picture so here you can see this area this this line that you are seeing this is the retinal pigment epithelium so at the level of fovea you are seeing an undulating pattern okay so here you see the deposits and these are the drusens okay and where we see drusens in which disease dr goes with dr so drusens are seen in dry armd okay so these are few important oct pictures for you okay the next question is a patient a 10 year old patient presented with blurring of vision he was having a regular itching for which he was using this drop okay so in this drop there is moxifloxacin and dexamethasone and this was prescribed by chemist he has not gone to any ophthalmologist for the checkup the most common cause of blurring of this vision is posterior subcapsular cataract open angle glaucoma Horner Tranta spots or Herbert spots. So answer here is B. That is open angle glaucoma. Why there is an open angle glaucoma? Because patient is using in this case dexamethasone eye drops for a long time. So remember the topical steroids. The topical steroids can cause a open angle glaucoma. Okay. So the topical steroids can cause an open angle glaucoma. and the oral steroids are causing a posterior subcapsular cataract it does not mean that topical steroids cannot cause posterior subcapsular cataract but the most common ocular manifestation at your level if that is asked in the exam the answer is topical steroids and if they ask for the oral steroids then it is posterior subcapsular sub spots posterior subcapsular cataract remember horner tranta spots and herbert spots these are not causing any decrease in vision herbert pits you see in trachoma and horner tranta spots you see at the limbus in the vernal keratoconjunctivitis okay so let's move to the next question this tonometer is best used for measuring intraocular pressure in which of the following cases normal tension glaucoma post operative patients corneal scar or post refractive surgery patients so basically in this case you have to see that what is this instrument so if you can see here it is written here this is a tono pen okay so this is a tono pen that is being seen here and the tono pen is basically used for measuring iop in those patients which have corneal scar okay so in corneal scars the best instrument that is there with which you can measure the intraocular pressure is tono pen because this tip if you can appreciate there is a tip here okay so this tip you can just put it on that area of the cornea which is clear so it can take pressure from any point of the contact in the cornea remember in aplanation tonometry if you can see here there is an aplanation tonometry so it has a large area okay so what is this this one is a gold standard of iop measurement that is also called aplanation tonometry so the aplanation tonometry is basically used in the cases where you have to take a intraocular pressure in a normal patient okay so normal tension glaucoma primary open angle glaucoma primary angle closure glaucoma in these cases you use aplanation tonometry 
but if they ask about the corneal scar in that cases your tono pen is the best now comes another question where we use in what is the tonometer we use in post operative patients so post operative patients we think that we should not touch the eye because it can cause a infection to transmit from one patient to another usually after every aplanation tonometry we clean the surface but still there can be some adenoviral uh, particles in the aplanation tonometer ad adenovirus there which can transmit from one eye to other eye and basically we do not want any risk of infection so in post operative patients we use non contact tonometry to get the eye pressures it is not as accurate as the aplanation tonometer but it basically solves our purpose where we have to take the intraocular pressure then comes the post refractive surgery in post refractive surgery there are new instruments of iop measurement like dynamic contour tomography and pascal okay so these two instruments also take care of the corneal hysteresis curve and many other factors so the iop measurement after a lasik okay or after any refractive surgery like prk or ptk it is much better than aplanation tonometry okay so here we end our session today hope you would have liked the session any doubts in the tonometry any doubts in the oct you can see our further lectures or you can put it in the comment section and get our guidance and our doubt removal program here so thank you very much subscribe